In this video, we shall discuss about state space modeling in Scilab. Let us consider that a system is expressed in state space as shown. We can enter the matrices one by one as you already know how to do this, separating the rows by semicolons. So this is your system matrix, matrix A. Then we can enter matrix B as a column matrix. Then we can enter matrix C, the input matrix, as a row matrix. And for our case, D is equal to 0, so we don't have to bother about that. So to represent it as a system in Scilab, all you have to do is to call the system function, pass in C as a string to tell Scilab that it's a continuous time system, and then we have it. This is the representation in Scilab. Now, if we want to convert the system, to a transfer function representation, we have to call the ACES to TF function and pass in the system represented in state space. So now, in this situation, you can see that there are two phantom terms appearing here, which have very minute, small, very small values, or the order of 10 to the power minus 40. These are because of the round of errors in the numerical algorithms employed in Scilab. But you can verify the system matrix had these eigenvalues minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. The characteristic polynomial also has the same roots. Now, once we have a system described in state space, we can use that description to find out its time response. So, we have to first define time as an array and then to find out its response to a step input we have to call CSIM function as represented here. We can plot the response. Also, if you want to find out the impulse response, all you have to do is to pass impulse as the input string to the CSIM function and the rest will be similar. Similarly, if you want to find out the natural response of the system to a given initial conditions when there is no input, then we will first have to represent the initial conditions as a column vector. And then you can call CSIM with zero input. And this is how you represent zero input, zero start t, and then passing time the system and the initial condition. So this is the natural response of the system to the given initial conditions. Now, if you want to find out the response of the system to a certain input and also to a certain initial condition, namely the natural response and the forced response together, then all you can do, we can add forced response with the natural response. And we can plot the results. We can now try plotting the impulse response, the step response, the response to the initial condition, and 
the response of the system to the initial condition as well as the step input. So this is the impulse response in blue. This is the step response in green. The red line here is the response of the system to the given initial conditions. And this is the response of the system to a unit step input as well as the given initial condition. Now, if you want to convert a system that is represented in, as a transfer function model to a state space model, all you have to do is to first enter the transfer function model as a polynomial. This is something we discussed in the last video. Here again, C means it's a continuous time system. 6 is the numerator. And what follows is the denominator of the transfer function model. Now, we can call the function TF2SS to convert the system into a state space model. Do note that there are infinitely many possible state space models for a single unique system that has a single unique transfer function model. Now this is the state space model. If you want to calculate the A, B, C, D matrices for this state space model, we would have to call the function A, B, C, D and pass in the state space model. So this will give you the matrices A, B, C, and D. Right. Also, we can very easily calculate the controllability matrix. So this is the controllability matrix. It depends on matrix A and matrix B. Also, the system we considered has a full rank in the controllability matrix, so the system is controllable completely. And also we can find out the observability matrix. If we know the matrices A and C, here also, this is a full rank, so the system we consider is completely observable.